Coffee Doug here. Welcome to Saturday Rough Cuts. Uh, it is the month of October, so I've been doing some horror movies, much like everybody else. Nothing new, but still fun. Um, I am going to review for you today Vault of Horror. Uh, I did Tales from the Crypt, the movie, a while back, and um, I'm going through all the Tales from the Crypts. Like I said, my girlfriend and I have been watching... Uh, all the seasons and any Tales from the Crypt movies, so as I finish them, I'll uh, review them for you. Vault of Horror, I had never heard of before. It's a 1973 film, uh, PG, which is kind of weird, and it's uh, British. It's like made. It's not made in America, but that's fine. It, uh, well, first, i got to bring up this drink. Pancake Hat made this drink uh, for me. He actually made this very drink. It's a beer Rita or beer Rita. It's a beer with like Minute Maid, frozen Minute Maid, Limeade. Like you put two of those and four beers in a pitcher, stir it, and it is delicious. I'd say it's the perfect summer drink, so I really shouldn't be drinking it in fall. But uh, I've had enough pumpkin beer tonight, so this is really good. Highly recommend it. Have some candy corn with it. Mmm, delicious. Vault of Horror. It is basically... Tales from the Crypt, the movie, part two. Uh, they wanted to make a direct sequel to it. Uh, they didn't... I, I don't know why they didn't go with Tales from the Crypt, part two. I believe they were both made overseas, so and, uh, I really didn't find much information on that. Same premise as the Tales from the Crypt movie and a lot of other horror anthologies. You get five strangers, they meet up, and they're each telling a story, a horror-slash-suspense story, about what has happened to them in the past, or or, or recently, or whatever. Um, it's directed by Roy Ward Baker, who I had never really heard of. Now, uh, Gaines and Feldstein uh, are the guy, you know, from the Tales from the Crypt. Al Feldstein, Bill Gaines, that's right. They wrote a lot of the stories for the Tales from the Crypt comics. So this is based on those old comics, um, which a lot of people know that already. Ironically, The Vault of Horror, the five stories in this movie... None of them were ever in a Vault of Horror comic. They, uh, they took place in Tales of Suspense or Tales from the Crypt, but not actually Vault of Horror. So that's kind of weird. I don't know why they wouldn't have chosen at least one or two stories from that Vault of Horror run. Um, starts off uh, fairly slow. You got the five characters, uh, five guys that uh, meet up, and they're each telling their individual story. And basically, just to make this easy, I'll tell you about... There's no huge stars in this, and uh, nobody I really recognize, but maybe... And there's probably going to be a lot of you that are going to write in or be like, oh, this guy's huge, or this person's huge. So I shouldn't have said no huge stars, just nobody I really know, particularly. The first story was Midnight Mess, and this was one of my favorites of all of them. It has to do... Or has to deal with a guy goes to this small town that he's never been to, and he's looking for his sister. And you can tell that he's got some ulterior motives. Like, maybe you want him to find her, maybe you don't. You just, you know, of course with these, I don't ever like to give too much away, but it, uh, the town has something very creepy going on, and he can't quite put his finger on it, and neither can you as the viewer. So that's kind of cool. They don't really let you all the way in until the end of the segment. The one issue I have with this uh, segment, as well, and it's more of the fault of the DVD, which you'll find right here, is the censorship. For some reason, and I've looked all over, in America, or maybe just in general at all, on DVD, there is not a version that I've found that is uncensored. And what's funny about that is the uncensored is basically nothing. It's There's some scenes here and there that by today's standards are not bad whatsoever. But like in the end of this first one, there's some gore, or what would have been some gore, and they put like a black, they black it out. It's like a black line, and it's so blatant. It's like they freeze the scene and put a black, like censorship line or whatever, right over where something would have happened. I'm like, there was no reason for that. It's just weird. It's like... That one, I can maybe see why they did it, but some of the other stories, because I don't want to talk about this with every story, but they do that, and there was no reason to censor it. So, I don't know why that hasn't... Especially if you're going to do a midnight movie double feature with Tales from the Crypt, put in the one that's uncensored. Come on, even if you got rated PG-13 or R. Um, 
So anyway, that story was one of my favorites. I thought it was creepy and fun, and just, uh, I, it was like a mystery. I didn't know what was going on the whole time. The second one, and I want to say they're each about 15 minutes, the tops, uh, maybe 20, 15. Uh, the Neat Job um, is about an obsessive-compulsive husband who just makes his new wife, her life, a living hell. And the reason I kind of like this one is because it had a lot of realism to it. You know, you just kind of, you don't really know somebody as well as you think you do until you're living with them and you're married to them. Like, that's just the way it is. You could be in love with somebody, they're your best friend. When you marry them, you find out new things about them. And uh, this is more of where she just finds out how kind of crazy he is. And I feel like that really happens in real life. Like, there are guys out there and girls that you just move in with them and they're fucking nuts like they go crazy over the stupidest things and I, he obviously is more of a lunatic type crazy but I kind of liked the interaction between him and her and what they were going through and kind of just how scared she is living with him now and then the the turn of events that take place because of that so good story I don't know that it really scared me at all but you know interesting to watch uh, the third one, This Trick Will Kill Ya, this one was weird. It, uh, had to do with a magician that, if I remember right, he's like, he's in Egypt or something, and he's looking for new tricks. Excuse me, I want more. Beer. Rita. He's looking for new tricks to basically try and steal. Really, he wants to, he wants to, uh, you know, hijack tricks from people. And it gets into him finding one, or a trick he really wants to do, and the magician there won't tell him how to do it. So he kind of tricks them into learning the trick, in a way. And that's all fairly quickly in the story, so I'm not giving much away. However, he definitely... Karma comes around and gets him, uh, because you don't go fucking with a magician that lives in Egypt. You just don't... Why would you do that? You don't know anything about that magician, and you probably don't know much about Egypt and what kind of spooktacular shit could be going on over there. So don't do it. I don't know why he would do that, but he uh, he gets in a mess. There's some cool visual scenes in this with the magic that they do. And uh, they've uh, you'll really like they've got the snake coming out of the basket type thing. And most of you know what I'm talking about. Real cool magic scenes, and it was fun. I liked it. Uh, the fourth one, Bargain in Death. Um, the thing, that has to do with grave robbing and uh, people are trying to run a scam. I don't want to talk about that too much because I can't give anything away. However, the thing I liked about the fourth one is they got funny uh, on purpose. They were like kind of making jokes and being humorous. You didn't see that in much of the others, and if it was funny, they certainly weren't meaning to be. You're just laughing at it now because, oh my God, what were, was the director thinking or whatever. But uh, that fourth one, I laughed. There, there was some funny parts, and I think they could have even made it a little more funny. Uh, had they tried. Uh, you know, I think they wanted to. They just did. They were trying to go horror as well, so. Because horror can be funny, folks, and it doesn't have to be tongue-in-cheek. It could just legitimately be funny and also scary. That's just one guy's opinion. Uh, the fifth one, Drawn and Quartered, it is about a guy that kind of what he paints... It, it, it's like what he paints can come true, in a way. And he, it's one of those voodoo type stories. Like, he, he makes these paintings, and then it can come to pass. And you obviously, if you do that, you don't want any paintings of yourself out there. It's, I don't know, I found that one a little slow. I didn't think it was a good one to end on. However, you also wouldn't want to start on it. I felt like it would have been better in the middle, you know, because that's one of the ones that you're just kind of riding through and watching, and you enjoy it. But... You really want a great one and a great one at the beginning and good bookmarks to the overall anthology of the movie. Um, but not bad. It just it wasn't my favorite. So um, I do recommend getting this, uh, um, you know, two-disc DVD. If you are a Tales from the Crypt fan, for sure you need to watch these. If you're just a horror fan, then I can't really recommend it and say you're going to love it. It's, uh, it is older. It is dated. And, you know, it's uh, it's not as scary. It's really not scary. But if you're a fan of those 
anthologies and those, you know, where it's short, short horror stories and, you know, and it all kind of ties in together at the end, then you're really going to, it's worth watching these if you haven't seen them and you can find this pretty cheap online. So, um, Coffee Doug, until next time, and I will uh, be reviewing more Tales from the Crypt in the future and more horror movies in the next three weeks. Here's to you.